Hey guys, this is Amit, and today I'm going to show you how to implement this code on CentOS 7, Red Hat 7, and like systems. All right, so usually you want to implement this code as to avoid users from um, writing too much data into the systems and running out of space. Um, so normally, um, in most situations, you want to um, implement the disk code on the home partition or the um, var partition if you are doing web hosting and stuff like that. So um, let's get started. So I have here is a CentOS, um, CentOS 7 system. CentOS 7 here. Let's start by looking at the um, structure of the partitions here. Uh, one thing I want to show you here is, is this. Looking at the output of this, we have the slash partition here and we have the slash boot partition, right? We don't care about these at this time. Those are just temporary file systems. Here, basically, we have a slash boot partition, and then we have everything else in the slash partition. In order for us to implement the coda to the system, you need to mount the partitions with some options that we're going to talk in a second here. If you wanted to implement this coda, in this case, you would have to um, apply those options to the whole slash partition, which is not normally a great idea. I mean, I would recommend using a separate partition for the um, file system that you want to implement the disk coda to. So you can either plan early on and have a separate slash home partition or slash var partition, wherever you want to uh, implement your Coda, or you can even have like a slash data partition, which you would then be um, assigning to the users. Either you can plan early on, or you can, if you have free space, then you can actually uh, create a new partition and then mount the home or var into that and then take that route. Or if, if you don't have that option, you can add a second disk and then uh, mount it and then use it that way. So in this case, I have added a, a second disk onto the system. So uh, let me show you that uh, real quick. So if I do F disk minus L, I have a dev SDA um, and then I have a dev SDB uh, five gigs and this is not being currently used, right? So let's go ahead and create a file system for that. Let's create a partition and then um, create a file system on that. If you would want me to create a separate video on using the um, disk partitioning tools, let me know in the comments and I will try and create that video for you guys. Uh, we are going to use the um, dev sdb. You can type m for help and it'll give you all the list, but for now we're just creating a new partition. So press n and enter. So primary partition, uh, partition number one, we don't have anything else. So for now, we're going to start at uh, the first sector and then end at the last sectors. Uh, that's it. And then we save the changes. W saves the changes and that's it. So if we do F disk minus L dev SDB, now we have a um, SDB one partition. So let's go ahead and create a file system for that. MKE2 FS minus T EXT four on the slash dev sdb1. Okay, that's it. So now we have a partition, but we need to mount it. All right. In order for us to mount, uh, we we want to do it on the FS tab so that, you know, um, that it's persistent on the reboots um, FS tab. So we go ahead and here the uh, device name is sdb1. And we want to mount it to the home directory, um, the defaults option, but we also want the user coda, uh, group coda, and then um, defaults one and two. Let's go ahead and save, save it. But if you are doing this on an existing system, you might already have um, users in the slash home directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that directory to, or just, you know, do a rsync off minus B. B. All right. So I won't need to do the recursive, right? So I have a user called user. So uh, the user's home directory uh, is, you know, moved over to the home.old. So now I'm going to do, go to the home directory. It doesn't even matter. I can just, you know, I could have just moved the directory over. So for now, I'm just deleting all the data because we already have it. 
So now we go here and then if we look at our FS tab, we have that mounted to slash home, this partition. So we're going to say mount minus A and then, um, oops, uh, my bad. So let's go to the FS tab. Yeah, it's the FS tab. We made a mistake here, not specifying the file system type. So let's go ahead and put, uh, it's going to be slash home and then uh, the mount point and the file system. Okay, there you go. Um, let's do a U mount of slash home if it is mounted. Okay, it's not mounted, so mount minus A. Now you can see that the slash home is mounted over here. Now we move our user back, uh, home.old uh, to slash home. Ah. It did specify the wrong option, minus E. I don't need to do that. So home.old, I am syncing to home. Okay, that's good. That's good. So like home, we have the user over there. And so now let's try and uh, do the Kodai stuff. So uh, a little bit of housekeeping item here. Um, in order to use the Coda, you require a package called uh, Coda. We already have it installed. It normally comes in, but if you have a um, minimal installation and if you don't have this package, make sure you just install that um, code. Okay, it's going to update the package, um, which I'm going to skip for this session, but you can go ahead and install, upgrade that. Now, once we have the partition mounted with the options, now the next step is to initialize the coda database so coda check and then um, c u z c meaning create the um so the c means create a new um, file and coda database u means users and group right okay and then we're going to specify um, so if you don't specify that, it's going to do for all the um, file system. But since we only want to do it for the slash home, then we are going to specify that here. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to generate the um, table of current disk uses. A-V-U-Z uh, slash home. Uh, you don't need to specify this. It's just going to, okay. So it just scanned the um, dev sdb1 and it found six directories and six files. And then the other thing is um, this over here says that your kernel probably supports journal D coda system, but you are not using it. So this basically what it means is our kernel uh, may support the journaled version of the coda implementation. So all you have to do for that is you're going to have to do is user USR Zcoda GRP Zcoda. All right, so for this tutorial, I'm just going to stick to the uh, regular coda. So now we have the, um, uh, the directory scanned and all. The next step is to assign a coda for the user. All right, you can just do the rep coda slash home to uh, view the current uses. All right, so now let's go ahead and assign a coda to the user. User, ah, ex um, you know, the user <laughs> happens to be the user on this system. So um, over here, a little bit of um, talk over here. So this is the file system that the coda is implemented for. This blocks, meaning the current uses, this is in kilobytes. Okay, and then this is the soft uh, limit. This is the hard limit. This is the number of inodes that you can limit and then soft and hard. So you can either limit the number of uh, files created by putting the limit on this and then or you can limit by the space um, uses um, by putting the limit on the blocks. So if you have the limit set to zero, that means it unlimited. So Let's go ahead and uh, create a blocks uh, limitation of, um, let's say, uh, one kilobyte. So 6,000, you need to put it under the soft limit. Let's create a soft limit of five megs, 5,000, okay? And then let's do a hard 
limit of let's say 10,000 all right so let's save that now we can verify that the coda has been set by you know so there's the coda limit and then um, all the limits are here right the other things is you can also like you know when you do the add coda it's going to open the default editor for the system if you wanted to um, disable coda you can just do coda off and then vauz and it just disable the coda so you can also do coda on minus ag okay so um you don't need to specify the file system i guess um i mean the partition okay so uh, the uh, coda is turned on that way you can turn it off with the coda off command um that's one and then um you can just view the coda for a user using the coda um user that shows that and then um you can also uh query all the users over the limit by typing this query command and then the rep coda rep coda minus a i'm sorry will display you all the um report of the current um coda and if in any case there is an unclean shutdown and you are having problems with the coda you can do is turn off the coda coda off on the uh, partition then you do the coda check and then you turn it back on <clears throat> okay now we have this user soft limit set to 5000 let's test that out i'm going to switch to that user Let's check the current uses. That's five meg. So the user is probably already over the soft limit, but let's create a, a one meg file and see um, what the system says. Um, so in order to create a dummy file of any size, you can utilize this command called dd, which is the disk droid. Um, it is a very powerful command, so be careful on how you use it. So dd input file equals dev zero. So we are using the dev zero as the source and then we're outputting it to 2.txt block size is going to be one meg and count equals let's do two meg uh two so what this does here is dd is the command input file so if equals meaning input file dev zero use the zeros and then create an output file of equals output 2.txt use the block size of one megs and count two meaning it'll create two times one is two meg file okay so let's go ahead and run that so it created the uh, files uh, if you look at here we have a total of seven megs right let's log in as root I think I I forgot to mention one thing that is you can put a grace period on the soft limit by running this command 8 coda minus T so this is the um, grace period for the soft limit so once you hit the soft limit and this uh, amount of time it starts telling you about the um, soft limit being read the grace period can be set to um, set in days, hours, minutes, etc. Um, it says right over here the units may be days, hours, minutes, or seconds. So this is a grace period before enforcing the soft limits for the users. All right. So we can change that to like um, five seconds. Uh, seconds. All right. So let's go to this user and then um, um, let's see what's the current use is seven megs and we probably have a hard limit on about um, about uh, 10 megs. So let's do a DD uh, um, IF equals dev zero um, OF equals three dot TXT and then um, Ds equals one meg count equals one. Uh, we have 
about 8 megs used. So this, let's just create a skip making a 1 meg file or let's do a 2 meg file. So now it says that the warning user block code are exceeded but you were still able to write the files. So if you look at here, so you can see that the file was actually created, right? So this is the soft limit. So it just gives you the warning, but you're still able to write the file. So now let's create a 5.txt with a block size of two, one meg and then the count of, let's say, 1024. Or even like count of 20, let's say. So one meg, 20 meg. So the user should not be able to create this file, right? Here, you see right failed user block code I exceeded too long. This message here says that the user block code I exceeded, but this one actually failed because this was still under the soft limit. So you just got the warning, but it was still able to write that file. But here, this is actually over the limit and the user wasn't able to write the file. So that's how the a block um, coda works. And then if you if you wanted to uh, uh, do a file number based um, coda, then you can use the um, coda user. So you just put the number of inodes here, a soft limit and a hard limit, and then um, let's just try it. So right now the user has 16 inodes created. So we'll create a soft limit on 17 and we do the hard limit on 18. Okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, just say, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah uh, to uh, 6.txt. So we already got the um, this coda exceeded, right? Right, but it is still created that file. So now, if you were to do so, this was the soft limit, these two were the soft limit. Now, you were not able to actually create a file. So now you can't create any more files any further. So, so here until here, until here, it was just a warning, right? I was on until warning. Now you can't write at all. So that's how you can implement the you know number of files limit as well as the um, uses limit using the user coda and the group coda. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and hope you liked it. If you liked this video, please um, like, share, subscribe, and uh, put down any comments you might have, any questions you might have, and any other videos you guys want uh, me to uh, create, and I'll try and do my best to come up with a video. Um, thank you for watching.